All right, coming up next, I'm going to take sports talk with the Watchbills. We'll have your quiz mania. It is back. Question of the day. And then we'll have double text sports court along with predictions for tonight's game. And then we'll have the answer to quiz mania uh, question. And then we'll have the thoughts on the game. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Double text sports talk. From Indianapolis, Indiana, this is the Double Take Sports Talk Show with the Watch Brothers. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Gerald and Darren Watts. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it, Double Take Sports Talk with the Watch Brothers. Welcome to our podcast with me, Darren Watts. Say hello to Darren Watts II. What's going on? Hello, everybody. Welcome to our podcast. Good early morning, Darren. What is happening? Mm. You know it. Another good day. Looks very nice out. It's yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't get any better than that. Just, just right, right man. Right. So, yeah, it's to a point where I know that it got a little toasty in here, even with the window open. So you know that's a good thing. Yeah, you know it's a good sign. That's a good thing. So. That's a little bit of a good sign. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today on this podcast, we have the quiz media question of the day. It is back today, and then we have Double Take Sports Courts. It's going to be a little different podcast today. We'll explain that as we go into the, uh, the podcast. And then we'll have uh, predictions for tonight's games along with the uh, final thoughts of our podcast. Jerry, you ready to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we head into the quiz mania question of the day, uh, you're probably going to notice a little bit something different for today. Today's gameplay, as a part of Double Take Sports Court, is a bit long because it's me and Daryl battling out in Mad 16. So it's going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be like that for the rest of the week up until Saturday. First quarter being shown today, second quarter being shown tomorrow, third quarter being shown on. Friday and the fourth quarter of show on Saturday. This whole particular thing is going to be uh, 27 minutes, maybe longer. It just depends. So you're going to see gameplay at the bottom with me and Daryl being at the top or however the production is going to be uh, made for the podcast. So you're going to, you're going to see mostly uh, gameplay and me and Daryl uh, throughout this uh, podcast. Today. So it's going to be a little bit different from, from what it usually is. So. That being said, quiz mania, question of the day. You are good and ready. Floor is yours, pal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's quiz mania for April 25th of 2018. Now, of course, this is once again from the 21st episode. This is just going to be an opinionated type of uh, quiz mania. This is going to be no right or wrong answer on this one. It's just going to be more based on how we feel, opinions and stuff like that. With that being said, here is the question of the games in the NBA playoffs in the Eastern Conference only. Now, we're going to go back to before I'll do one last night. So we're going to put this now, even though that the Bucks have a higher percent, not the Bucks, the Boston Celtics has a higher percentage now of winning the series, but we're going to go back to when all the teams, the Washington Wizards, Toronto Raptors, Pacers and Cavs, 
and the Bucks and the Celtics. I'll tie it two two before Boston won last. Okay. Of those of those seedings of those games, who has the highest shot of winning the series four games to two? Will it be the Bucks and the Celtics? Now, although, like I said, they won last night, they have a higher percentage, but that don't mean that game could go into seven, and they would be automatically knocked out into the equation. Then you got the Cavs, the Pacers, they play tonight, they got 2-2, two, two, and then you got the Wizards and the Raptors. They're tied 2-2. Two, two. So of those, who has the highest shot of winning four games to two? So Arbor on that, think about it. So to be, it's, this is a. I think this is a very interesting question. It is very uh, interesting, but how the competitive? Yeah, it's just it's a big based based competitiveness of all the teams that has been playing so far. So that's going to be pretty interesting. And so um, of course, once again, think about it. Have your answers. Uh, of course, we're going to have that uh, answer for you, and we're going to discuss that, that answer uh, later on in our. Uh, podcast. No, I don't. So I just lied. I don't have an answer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who. I'm just going to have to take a minute and kind of just sit down and think about it for a minute. This is going to have to be my own brain. If this right here ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. I have my answer. I don't have no one. I don't have no one. Wow. So, so we'll we'll definitely keep keep an eye out on uh, we'll keep an eye out on that indefinitely. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I don't incredible. Have I don't. I don't know. I really do not have an answer. Okay. All right. Um, on to double take sports court. Yeah. It's presented by no one. So whatever you're Absolutely. good. Ready? The floor is yours, man. All right. Um, so we're going to go back and, and take a look at some of these series again. One of the series that we have not really talked about uh, so far is the uh, San Antonio Spurs, Golden State Warriors. Of course, the Warriors won that series four games to one. Uh, talk about this series just a tad. Uh, just a tad. Uh, let's start off with the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, the Marcus Aldridge from last night had 30 points, 12 rebounds, four assists. And he about the, he was about the most productive player on the floor from that night. Uh, Patty Mills had 18 points, five rebounds. Manuel Ginobili came off the bench with 10 points, five rebounds, seven assists. Pal Cazot only had a point, six rebounds, and three assists. This is this is heartbreaking. Tony Parker, four points, one rebound, one assist. These were championship players, and they only get one point. I, this it's disgusting. Uh, and then going over to Golden State, Kevin Durant, 25 points, six rebounds, five assists, a steal on two blocks. Uh, Clay Thompson, 24 points, five rebounds, four assists. And Draymond Green, 17 points, 19 rebounds, seven assists. Of course, when that was uh, part of the uh, Tuesday recap on the audio podcast. Uh, Duro, let's take a uh, closer look real quick at this series because we didn't really get to talk about this series because that was pretty much determined after game three who was going to win this series. Um, talking about this series a little bit, Daryl, what was your thoughts about this four games to one series with the San Antonio Spurs going to stay Warriors? San Antonio Spurs season was already a disastrous right from the beginning of January. It was disastrous then, and it got worse in the playoffs. Now, although they played their hearts out, they played. And you can't account for actually how they performed been throughout these playoffs because the Warriors outplayed them. Rather, rather if the Warriors was playing from behind, the Spurs was playing from behind, but could you know compete? The series on hand was pretty much a preparation, in my personal opinion, for the winner of the Portland and New Orleans. 
And so that has been said it was a test in preparation for the Falcons, which is going to be more of a difficult task because the Pelicans are going to bring more to the table than what the Spurs could bring to the table. And the Spurs weren't able to absolutely get that oomph like how they would mm-hmm. any other point in the series. So this could be Monty Nobley's last season right here. That that was probably his last game last night. Um, Tony Parker's uncertain. Um, Powell Cazzo, that's uncertain too. I think Lamar Cazzo just might stay around. And, of course, I think personally that uh, back in January was Kawhi Leonard's last game with the Spurs, too. So they got a lot of rebuilds. So, you know, Greg Popovich is very good with rebuilds after he came, when he came in 1996. It took, it took a minute, but took a minute. He, he's been able to keep a, a, a good hold on, uh, on that. Uh, a real quick question with a real quick answer. Do you think that a Kawhi Leonard was – Health, do you believe that San Antonio would be good state? Absolutely. This would be a seven game series, I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, taking a look at uh, tonight's games. Uh, one of the games that I want to touch up on real quick. This is actually going to be real quick because I, I don't have a whole lot to say about this game. Pacers, Cavs. That's going to be a seven o'clock tip off. It's going to be at Quick and Loans Arena in Cleveland. Um, we picked last night, or yesterday, excuse me, we picked yesterday that the uh, blue and gold is going to win. We always going to pick them regardless. Um, regardless. But taking a look at it, not from our personal feelings about the blue and gold, and a professional aspect of going into tonight's game, who do you have for the Cleveland Cavaliers in the other Pacers game? Blue and gold. And I say that because the Pacers, no matter how you put the Pacers in the position, no matter what, they could be down 18, 20, 16. They're going to claw back, take the lead. The only problem will be is for them to actually hold on to this lead. And if the Pacers actually get out to a strong start, they ain't looking. They've shown that game one. They've shown – they show all series long that they can either come back, get a good start, and keep it, and not look back. They've shown that. They have shown a lot more than what Cleveland could. Yep. You know, it had to take LeBron James for them not to score in the first quarter of game one to actually show something for him to be productive. Yeah. Versus everybody else not being productive. You can't yeah. get it done. Yeah, I agree. The Cavs won the – game at Bankers Life Fieldhouse first time that the Cavs won at Bankers Life Fieldhouse uh, this season and postseason. Well, let me take that back. This postseason, they didn't win in the season at all, but they did win in the postseason. That came from the other night. They won one zero four one hundred. 100 uh, LeBron James with 32 points. Uh, Demond Vincent Sabonis had 19 points. Uh, Thaddeus Young had 16 rebounds. LeBron James had 13. Derek Collison had 8 assists. And LeBron James had 7. Uh, they're going to continue. If if the Cavs want to win this series, they're going to have to be able to climb a deficit and stay put. They cannot keep letting Pacers come back in this series. They have came back in every busy. single game except game one. Game one, they took the lead and kept it. Game two was a whole nother ball game. Game three was a whole nother ball game. You know, so the Cavs are going to have to be able to keep up. And then it, and it's looked like they're going to continue to even have a far more harder time. But now the Pacers are going to sit down. If they can figure out how to finish out these games, Cavs are only going to, going to win two games this series. They're only going to win two if the Pacers can figure this out. If they can figure this out, it's a whole done deal. It's a done deal. It's just all about staying disciplined. And it's all about uh, – I said it before. I've said it before. It's all about adjustments. Making adjustments and you know trying to find the proper adjustment to win games, and this is what ha- this has been. But at the same time, these adjustments has really been working to the Cleveland Cavaliers' favor. Absolutely. So, but they still get some of these wins. Mm-hmm. So speaking of discipline, I'm gonna switch this over, but I'm gonna be very bold and very real when I say this: 
Utah Jazz, Oklahoma City Thunder, Paul George's team, the Pacers are in a much better predicament than the Oklahoma City Thunder right now with Paul George's team. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Going into tonight's game, Utah lead this series three games to one, have a chance of wrapping it up in Oklahoma City. Yep, in Oklahoma City. Utah won 113 to 96 the other night. Um, Paul George seems like he can score as many points as he wants, but the Utah Jazz is a team. They're a team. They are a team. So you have a big man in the middle. You have a point guard. You have a shooting guard. You have a small forward for Utah. You have everything at their disposal. Russell Westbrook is a one-man show sometimes, and it's starting to show that he is a one-man show because he can't get nothing going with Paul George and Carmelo Anthony on the team. Let's be real. He's a one-man show. He was better off without Paul George and uh, uh, Carmelo Anthony. I'm just being real here. He was better off without them. And now that them two on the team, they down 3-1 in the series. And even in the playoff, Russell Westbrook have had trouble in the playoffs, even with Kevin Durant, even before he left. So let's just be real here. I don't see Oklahoma City having a chance. I do not see them having a chance in Utah. I mean, in Oklahoma City. This series is about done. This series is about done. It's done. It's a done deal. Um, first, what's your thoughts? Okay. Firstly, everything you said, absolutely agree. Agree. Can I? cannot put more to what you said on that. Here is my problem with the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Oklahoma City Thunder are playing with three players with three different basketball personnel. You got Russell Westbrook as, as the ring leader, scoring, passing, and rebounding, whereas you got Carmelo as shoot your lights out and give me the ball in close situations, and I'm done. Then you got Paul George, the mini LeBron crybaby that wants the ball in close situations that he is actually – not the at the actual clutch performer. Yeah. He's not a clutch performer. No. Yeah. So you got three different basketball personalities. And that's that type of combination is is not, not going to chew any type of progressors when it comes to the playoffs. It can get you somewhere in the season. But it won't get you nowhere in the playoffs because the playoffs is all about one team effort. Everybody coming together to play like one. And if you can't do that, you are not going to move on to the series. And Darren, I absolutely agree. This right here, this is going to end right there in Oklahoma City. They already lost once Oklahoma City. They're going to lose again. And it will be, what, tonight or tomorrow night? Tonight. It's tonight. Uh, That is a 9.30 tip-off. Yeah, the, at, at approximately by around 10.30, 11 o'clock, 11.30, I'll say 11.30-ish, we will see Oklahoma City out of the playoffs. Well, let me be real. 9.40 is when I see them out of the playoffs. 9.40. Game before even starts. During. So why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, I was going to be a little nice to say 10 o'clock. But I was more nice. I said the end of the game. Yeah, see, yeah, I wasn't even giving it the end of the game. I was giving it until 9.40. You know, I was going to give it until 10, but 9.40. I give it until 9.40. 9.40 is going to determine it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't have no chance whatsoever. You can't you can't put an exclamation point on the Oklahoma City Thunder. You just can't. Mm-hmm. To me, everybody thought the Oklahoma City Thunder had a good season. I don't. It was garbage from the beginning, and it was garbage to the end, and now it's garbage in the playoffs. 
Well, I mean, you think about it. How, how, how do you think Victor Oladipo came out to be where he was with the Pacers? Again, Russell Westbrook being that one-man show, Victor Oladipo never had a chance to show out. So, right. I agree. Right. I agree. I agree. So, yeah. Once Russell Westbrook quit thinking about his triple-double stats, maybe they could get some. Once Carmelo Anthony stopped thinking about shooting the ball so much, maybe they will get somewhere. Once, Once Paul, Paul George, George stops crying, maybe they will get somewhere. I agree. So, so. That's, a, that's a big understatement right there. That's a big understatement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Utah making them look real. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They just got to stay disciplined. I'm impressed with everything that they've done so far. Yeah. Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, uh, Rubio. They're playing, they're playing Utah Jazz back basketball. Absolutely. We touched up on it yesterday, how we talked about uh, the look after Gordy Hayward. Nobody didn't, think, nobody didn't even think that they would have a chance. Hmm. They got the number five seed. And not only do they have the number five seed, they lead – the best of seven, three games to one. Yeah. Yeah. In, in I said, yeah. Very impressive. And then they go ahead, if I'm correct, let me sure I got this right. Yep. Now, the next round is going to be very interesting because they face the winner of the Houston Rockets Minnesota Timberwolves series. That is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. That's going to be interesting. So bear that in mind. <clears throat> bear that in mind. Mm-hmm. All right, there you have it, Double Take Sports Court, ladies and gentlemen. Jump right on over the question. Hey, what's next? All right, Chris Mania. Okay, here we go. So. We've been, just been talking about the playoffs in the Double Take Sports Court. It still we didn't help me about with my the decision. Question. Yeah, they, <laughs> because we've been on the uh, West Conference side. So now we're going to have our answers to quiz mainly. We're going to go ahead and shift to the Eastern Conference. Uh, now, I will, before we get to Darren's thoughts, if he have any, but uh, before we get to that, we, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this uh, this question. Of the games in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference before last night's Bucks Celtics game tied at 2 2, who has the higher percentage of winning the series four games to two? Will it be the Bucks and the uh, Celtics, the Cavs and the Pacers, or the Wizards and the Raptors? Now, so far, Bucks has a higher chance. Due to because they played last night and they won, and now they're up three games too. So they're still in the mix. If the Bucks win next time around, I want to say probably tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow. They're the only game tomorrow. Yep. yep. If they play, if they win tomorrow, they, their chance is shot out. So who do you believe, Derek? This is tough. And I know it's tough. Who do you see out of these three teams? that will have a higher percentage of winning four games to two. I'm going to be real. I had to think about it, but I'm just going to go ahead and just put it out there, and I'm just going to stick to it. If you pay attention to a pattern so far in this playoffs, the one thing that these two two series have, and that's the Wizards before last night, uh, the Celtics and the Bucks, uh, Pacers and Cavs, and then who was the other one? Raptors and Wizards. All these games have one thing in common except for this one, this, these two in particular teams, the Pacers and the Cavs. Think about it. Wizards, Raptors, Bucks, Celtics. And who was the other one? Wizards, Raptors, uh, if Bucks, Bucks and uh, Celtics. Are you talking about Pacers and Cavs too? No, I'm excluding. Eliminating them. Yeah. It's okay. uh, the Bucks That's it. Celtics, and then it's uh, Toronto and uh, Washington. Washington. 
Toronto and Washington, Milwaukee and Boston. Home court advantage. Pacers and Cavs, nothing like that. Not so. It should have been Cavs, home court advantage. Pacers stole game one. Percentages are higher when game ones are stolen on the road. Take a look Absolutely. at uh, take a look at the um, um that got it. Um the Jazz. Did the Jazz win game? Let me double check, make sure that's right. Did the Jazz win? No. Oklahoma won game one. And Utah won game two. They still took one on the road. They took one of the two home courts in the first two games. Houston didn't. Toronto didn't. Everybody had won their game once at home except for the Cavs. The Pacers. Yeah, the Cavs and the Pacers. That's the only team. So my answer is going to be the higher percentage team is going to be not Boston. The Pacers. Especially if they win tonight. If they win yes. tonight, they definitely they got us to win it at home. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm still sticking to that. It's going to be the Pacers. Mm -hmm. I think they will have the higher chance of moving on and waiting for the Raptors and Rizzers because everybody else, I believe, is going to go into seven. Everybody else is going into seven. Yeah. If the Pacers do not win tonight, then they'll probably go into seven. But other than that, Mm -mm. No, I'm sticking with the Pacers. So am I. I'm sticking with now, the Pacers. Although, the higher percentage, if, if this was actually a game seven a percentage, the Wizards and the Raptors, the Pacers and the Cavs would have been going into game seven. But since this is this is a higher percentage of winning 4-2, I agree with you. I got the Pacers and the Cavs. I got the Pacers. Ain't no doubt. Like I said, because you cannot take away, you cannot take away the, the danger that the Pacers has put on the Cavs yeah. when they've had come from behind, yeah. claw, come, came back and had a strong start and held on to it. They're a, a very disciplined team. Except when they are losing, but they have the ability to come back, claw back, right if they are either their bankers like Field House or right if they are in quick alongs with they have shown that they can come back yep. in these games. Except right. game two. Yep. They fell three. Actually they fell a point short for actually taking the lead winning the game. Uh -huh. But they are losing by three. Yep. That right there, that is so dangerous. Yeah. But if we've always talked about this, there. This is a very unpredictable sports entertainment spectrum. It is. It is. So, like I said, I still agree. I think if the Pacers can cast, I think the Pacers can win this series four games. Two. I am a firm believer of that now. I think that they can make the proper adjustments to Fix it. Yep. Five is six. So, Washington the Raptors, they're going to be home court. So, that's going to be a winner on home court. Same with the Milwaukee and Boston. So. Yep. But we'll see. It's very unpredictable. So, we'll see what happens. Other than that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is your uh, quiz man answer. That was your quiz man question of the day for April 25th, 2018. All right. What's next? Final thoughts? There. Oh, any final thoughts? No, oh, I, yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I was just saying, no. Oh, I was going to say, oh, I'll screw yeah, it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I have nothing. Nothing else. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay, all I got too. So if there's nothing else, we can wrap this up and get on out of here. Let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Double Take Sports Talk. If you like what you
Deacon is going to go up. Kaya for the rest of the day, sir. You can the comment section like as usual. Go on the social media sites of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get us up there. As is any questions in particular, that that brings us forth. If you like, wish to share them on, uh, on the air on our report. We're also on iTunes. Download our episodes there. But until then, I'm Durham. There's something else inside. You got it. All righty. Catch up with us on another episode of Double Take Sports Talk. Until then, ciao. Double Take Sports Talk here with me, Daryl Watts. Now, there's an understatement that always goes and has always been true from day one when sports decided to come out. It's that it can be very unpredictable. And, of course, that's always been the statement that's always been so true. And depending on how you look at it, it can be very unpredictable. But with Double Take Sports Talk, we just throw some entertainment in there. Even if we don't get predictions right or theories don't come out right, we always just throw a little entertainment into the mix. So why not just have a little fun with it? That's how predicting can be so fun if you make an entertainment out of it. But other than that, of course, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But anyway, we're on social media around the, around the globe here, or or social media on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can hit us up on our fan page uh, at the Watch Brothers. You can hit us up on Twitter at DTSD2414, and of course, you can hit us up on Instagram, uh, Double Tech Sports Talk. So, YouTube, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. You can share. You can do all the good stuff. Do anything that you like. We're just trying to grow a podcast here, folks. We're also on the iTunes. You can download our episodes there. We're on the video, of course, and we're on the audio portion, too. So either way that you can enjoy this podcast, you can do it audio, we can do it on video. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the podcast. And until then... Ciao.